Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Believe in Bears. My name is Joey Christopoulos and my co-host, Corey Wooten. But first, let's talk about our sponsor, BetOnline.ag. Look, football might be over, but basketball, it's in full steam, and it's heading towards the playoffs. And BetOnline's got the latest odds, totals, and player performance props, and even where the next coach is going to get fired. BetOnline's got all the odds, and it's the number one spot for all your best sporting needs. So what are you waiting for? Head over to the website right now or go on your mobile device and sign up today. Receive a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to get started. It's not just basketball. They got hockey, boxing, UFC odds. The Olympics are over, but Bet Online has got all, everything that you might need from your Vegas casino games. Bet Online, the number one online wagering destination. It's the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports and play your favorite games. Bet Online, where the game starts. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming into the pod. Thank you for checking us out here on the Believe Podcast Network YouTube channel. We got a fantastic guest here with us today. But first, I got to say hello to my co host. He's Fox 32's very own and former Bears defensive end, Corey Wooten. What's up, Corey? Welcome back. Good to see you. What's, what's up, Joey? It's been a minute. You know, the Super Bowl came and went, and uh, we, we got one of my favorite guys in the world uh, coming on the show. My man from B96 and my fellow co host on Fox, Gabe Ramirez. What's up, Gabe? How you doing, baby? Yep. What's up, guys? It is an absolute pleasure to be on this podcast. I watch it, I follow it, and be able to talk Bears with the two of you. Can't wait. Uh, this has been a long time coming, and uh, it's perfect to have Corey's bodyguard uh, at the Bruin Views on. And I just want to start with this, as Gabe just, <laughs> just Gabe just really quick. While you're protecting Corey at those Bruin Views, we do have something in common, man. Um, so just talk a little bit about what is it like to co-host a show with a good man like Corey during one of the more frustrating and at times embarrassing bear seasons that we've seen in recent yeah. history. I, I will say this, and this is the one thing that I tell everybody about Corey, is that, you know, in our industry, you know, in media, you, you tend to think that people are going to be full of themselves, that they're going to be, you know, standoffish. And Corey is the complete opposite. If you ever see Corey anywhere, walk up to him, say hello. He will engage you. He will make you feel like you're just as important as his mom. And he's that kind of a guy. And outside of that, he's just a ton of fun. He's a good human being. And I think ultimately that's why him and I, we built this bond between each other because we're both just good people. And Corey Wu is a good person. I know you expect me to say something funny or silly. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm going to give him credit. I'm going to give him his kudos, man. I, I genuinely enjoy being around Corey Wu, I, man. He's a I really good that, human man. being. Yeah. No, I enjoy being around you. And it's always it's always uh, funny because when we're at these Bruin Views, you know, I, I work out a lot, and I, I think I have pretty big arms and stuff like that. But everyone comes up to Gabe, and they're like, "Dude, you've been you've been working the triceps and biceps because you're Shut making Corey up. look small, huh?" Shut up! I just say this: Corey just knows I whoop his ass in basketball. All right, and that's the only thing I tell what about golf, I though? him. What about golf? I'm Puerto Rican. We, we don't know any. Chichi Rodriguez didn't do it. Chichi <laughs> Rodriguez, man. You know, he used to, to stick with butts and over there do the. Do... <laughs> Oh, well, uh, this is what it takes, guys, especially last year with the Chicago Bears. It takes some laughter. It takes like some good times because it was an up and down season. And let's just kind of roll it forward now, because I think what's so refreshing about heading into this offseason is none of the stats matter anymore. We can run through, you know, DVOA or the Bears offense finish this, that or whatever. We got a new regime in house. So, Gabe, let me kind of start it off here for you. Out of the four new hires. Is there one specifically that has you the most optimistic and why? So here they are, general manager Ryan Poles, head coach Matt Eberflus, offensive coordinator Luke Getze, or defensive coordinator Alan Williams. Which one and what you've heard and what you've read and what you've seen has you perhaps the most excited heading into this offseason? Yeah, I think immediately once we hired the GM, Ryan Poles, it really just perked me up because I think, you know, in, with any organization, you need someone that can look from the outside in, right? The coaches we've seen in the last couple of regimes, they can get, kind of get caught up in their own and get in their own way. A GM can be that guy that's watching the chessboard and say, hey, you're missing some moves, you're missing some pieces. And, and they, But the difference is, as opposed to a game of chess, they can actually come in and help you. And so Poles, coming from an offensive line background, being in a great organization that he just came from, he just looks like, you know, I think more often than not, you, you need that, that, that coat of fresh paint. And I think that's what he brings to the Chicago Bears. I think he brings some youth, some energy, and I think that he genuinely is passionate about this team. And I think, whereas maybe, and I'll shade that pace, I hate to talk about people that left, you know, but maybe he just, he didn't love the Bears the way that Poles is going to love the Bears, right? Got drafted mm. by them, wants to see them succeed. So for me, he's the one that gets me the most excited outside. I mean, the coach, you just don't know too much about him. I mean, the offensive coordinator, you know, he's coming from Green Bay. Eh. But <laughs> Poles, I mean, I just think for me, he's Lots the guy that I look at. 
and say, hey, you know what? He's going to be the difference maker on this for this organization. And, and Gabe, let me ask you a question. So was Eberflus your number one pick? Who was your number not. one pick in this process? Who was? You know, oddly enough, I think a lot of people had him pegged. It was Jim Harbaugh. I mean, just because, again, for the same reasons why I like uh, Ryan Poles, right? A Chicago has some history with the Chicago Bears and really wants the team to be successful. So for me, it was him. I understand there were a lot of hoops and I understand he wanted a lot of money and we didn't, couldn't necessarily match those dollars and that's fine. And, but if you're looking for a second place guy, I, I would like somebody that's, and Corey, I'm sure you're just as equally as excited. Somebody that's interested in the defensive side of the ball. Yeah. You know, I think every team in the NFL has their identity, right? And they try to build the best product they can around just that. And the bears are built on defense. We know that. And you look at the Los Angeles Rams, you know, they, that was their core. They went and built around that, got a guy like Matthew Stafford. And I feel like, you know, the Bears, you know, if you can build on defense and just get a, a, a serviceable offense, then you, you have the potential to do some damage in the playoffs. That's why we're on the same page. Me and Gabe, I, I thought the mm -hmm. same thing. I thought Harborough was my first uh, pick. Oh, nice. Because look, what he, look what he did with Colin Kaepernick and how he had that offense yes. rolling, the running game. You know, you got an athletic guy like Justin Fields. I just thought there was such a great fit. And he, he was good with hiring the defensive coordinator. He had Vic Fangio over there. So I thought that would be perfect. But I agree with you. I think it's getting back to what the Bears do well. Defense, right? Lovey Smith, when I played for him, even before that, the, the, the team was all built on defense, right? And they had Rex Grossman when they made the Super Bowl. So it just proves <laughs> to you that defense wins championships. Obviously, if we could have a little better quarterback and, and offense, things could have been better. But I think, you know, getting back to a disciplined ball club, because this past year, the defense was all out of sorts, right? We couldn't stop the run. We couldn't get off on third down. So getting back to that fundamental disciplined football team uh, that's able to get off the field. So I like that going for Justin Fields. Now, if this coordinator, if he can get things going for him, right, run the football, get it going, get some play actions and things of that nature. Hopefully we can be a winning football club this team. Yeah, if I could weigh in on the offensive side, I mean, you're hitting it, Corey. I want to ask both of you guys your reaction. I don't know if you saw Luke Getze's introductory press conference, but I found it to be one of two different roads. Now, the first one is they're like, hey, what are your offensive philosophies and principles? And he's like, uh, well, I don't know. I'm going to get together with the guys and personnel, and we're going to build it around Justin Fields, which could be one of two ways, right? That's one, hey, what are we having for dinner? Uh, I don't know who's coming to dinner yet, and I haven't put the fridge yet, so let me figure it out. Or two, it is the flip. It is the flip side of Matt Nagy, who said, "I have my system, I have my route concepts, and this is what we're going to run." Where Luke Getzey seems to be more open and malleable to changing and hopefully molding it around the offense. I mean, maybe Corey, if you want to go first, and then Gabe, you know, how do you guys ingest that? And are does that have you optimistic, or does that have you be like, are you dodging the question a little bit? And what are we having for dinner? So it has me optimistic, but at the same time, it kind of makes me think, maybe is he dodging it a little bit? But I'm just hoping that he's open-minded, right? He looks at everything. And he's like, how can I put Justin Fields in the best position to succeed, right? Let's run the football. Like I talked about, we got two really good running backs, David Montgomery, Khalil Herbert. Um, really get them going. Take the pressure off them. Get some of those play actions, some of those sprint outs, the boots. Get Justin Fields comfortable. Then once he gets comfortable, we have this strong defense, right? That's able to be the anchor of the team. So there's not pressure on him. Then running the football, then there's another layer of pressure off him. Then we can open up things. So that's how you get him successful. So hopefully he'll just be open-minded because Matt Nagy was like, hey, I'm going to run this system. Nobody's going to question me. On third and one, I'm going to run a toss play. And me and Gabe were pulling our hair out. You know, luckily that we still have our hair, you know, in this old age that we are. Um, it, was, it was just a nightmare at times. So I'm hoping that he just caters his offense to him and allows him to be comfortable. I think the good thing about him is that, you know, I, to me, that was like the best answer possible, right? We yeah. saw what happens when you walk into a situation and you feel like you know the best answer without seeing what you actually have, right? I want you to come in and, you know, you're a young coach. And, and, and it also proves that he, he's capable of anything, right, as an offensive coordinator. It don't matter. Ch tell me who I have and I'll, I'll you know, <laughs> concoct a, a delicious yes yeah. for him or, or be an offensive jukebox you know what i mean like just yeah. put a quarter in who are we playing this week and let's play that song yeah. like that type of thing yeah right? and, and and that sounds like something that we haven't seen in a while which is a guy that has the ability to adjust you know i think one big complaint from the chicago bears fans over the last couple of years was that you know there was little to none uh halftime adjustments and so when you see a guy mm -hmm. and then it gets he's like you're saying to yourself okay this guy he, he seems like i love a super confident guy that's why I like hanging out with Corey Wooten. He's, he's super confident. 
he's super confident. But that, that to me, that's exactly what you want from an offensive coordinator, especially when you have a young quarterback who's still trying to find his own base in what that looks like in the NFL. And I, and I think, too, the fact that he got Aaron Rodgers' stamp of approval, that means a lot. Because, you know, Aaron Rodgers is going to talk great about anybody if he, if he – you know, he's not the type to just say, oh, this about anybody. So I think it's good that he was able to say that and say, hey, he's an up-and-coming guy. The Bears got a good one. So I, I feel good hearing that from, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in the league in Aaron Rodgers. Well, Corey, Corey, he owns us. So it's only fitting <laughs> that he sends us a guy – that can work with our system, all right? <laughs> That's true. He also, uh, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers also just had a 12-day cleanse, and he came out of it realizing that what he says affects other people in life. So <laughs> there you go. we're making steps here. We're making huge <laughs> steps. <laughs> uh, let's roll it over to free agency. Only a couple weeks away, um, but I already can't wait. I mean, that's for a lot of football fans, it's like a Christmas Eve, Christmas Day situation. Uh, Gabe, I'll start with you first, and maybe we can roll it out from here. Uh, if I can give you two options, which would you probably prefer? Option one, uh, wide receiver and top offensive tackle off the free agent market, or two, offensive linemen off the free agent market. You can only have one of those. Which way are you going? I love this question, Joey. And for me, I think most fans would say two offensive linemen, protect Justin Fields, blah, blah, blah. But what you got to remember is that Justin Fields has amazing legs. He can escape the pocket. You don't want him to be in those situations. But he can, and he's capable. He's not a stand-in-the-pocket kind of quarterback like Tom Brady. So, for me, I'm going offensive tackle and a wide receiver. Give this man another weapon, right? We didn't have the opportunity to see Allen Robinson reach the level that we wanted him to be at, right, that top-tier receiver. So, if you just put anyone in there to pair up with Darnell Mooney, who's a fantastic receiver, you know, you already got Speedy Guy. You're going to get back a Tariq Cohen, someone that can be a weapon for – Justin Fields in the flat. Yeah. But if you give me a top receiver and an offense, a top offensive lineman that can stay healthy, that's the pairing that I want. Because to me, if you're if I'm Justin Fields, I'm I'm just trying to put myself in his mindset, right? He's like, yo, let me get a left tackle that's a super stud or whatever, anybody, any addition to the offensive line, and then give me a receiver, I'm a kill out there. And I think that's what he's thinking. And I think that's what the Bears really need. Two offensive linemen is great, but I think if you can get him another weapon, somebody as good as Justin Fields that can again. Is, is elusive and can get, get out of the pocket and find a guy who can, you know, create his own space after the play breaks down. To me, that's what it is. And I know Corey agrees with me. I know yeah, Corey wants the we're, weapons, right? We're, we're on the same page, man. It, it's all about the left tackle, right? The blind side, right? The right side, he can, he can, he can maneuver with that, right? Because he sees that pressure coming. We just need the blind side, the left tackle shirt up, and we need that other weapon. So speaking of Allen Robinson, right? I know there's been a lot of talk because people are saying, hey, him and Matt Nagy really had the disagreement. Uh, could you see a reunion with him possibly with this new staff? How do you feel about that? Because it seemed like he didn't love want it. to play out there during, during Matt with I Matt love Nagy. It. Yeah. Listen, Allen Robinson wants to be the number one target. And if he comes back to the Chicago Bears, he will be just that, right? And I asked, Corey, we asked it all last season. Why isn't Justin Fields sitting down with Allen Robinson the same way that he's sitting down with Darnell Mooney? Why aren't they doing that? Why, why, why isn't there a discussion taking place between the two of them? So I feel like, you know, another year in a system, right? It's like uh, when you're a sophomore in college, right? And if you built a friendship with someone, you guys had the same professor freshman year, that sucks. And then you go into sophomore year, you guys now can, you know, copy each other's notes. You understand what's going on and you have a new professor. You guys are, can become best of friends because you've dealt with the BS from the first round freshman year. And I feel like that can really happen. With Allen Robinson, Joy, what do you think? Do you you feel that way too, do, or do, are you like get Allen Robinson out of here? No, I'm looking at the 66 targets he got last year, and I'm just scratching my head and saying, you know, what what exactly happened? And look, I I think it's a fair comparison that they're not the same player, Allen Robinson, and Devonte Adams. But you're telling me that they can't scheme open Allen Robinson the same way right. that they would yeah. on rub routes and those little quick little slants and stuff like that to get him in space. Like it seems to be making a lot of sense. And I'm with you guys on the whole weapon offensive tackle thing because here's what happens is let's just say we do the two offensive linemen and and it's great right and we figure it out and it's short up you are putting yourself in a weird position where you go through all next year without a lot of weapons and then you become that desperate thirsty team in the offseason that overpays for wide receiver x or y or z and in terms of the options that are out there right now i'm sorry mike williams I don't know if I've seen enough from Mike Williams in his game to say, let's give him the bag. Right. And like yeah. everyone else is coming off an ACL or an injury of some kind, whether it's a Michael Gallup or, and are you going to spend draft capital on Calvin Ridley? So Alan Robinson, come on down. I mean, uh, my, my thing that we talk about Gabe all the time with Corey is that 
can we get him at under 17 after we just paid him 17? Right. His, what's his market right now? That's the question. I, I, I think I think what you said in the beginning of your statement, Joey, is 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 you have to dissect that a little bit further. Where you said, why can't he be a Devontae Adams? Well, we have the same offensive coordinator that was getting Devontae I Adams schemed yeah. open. So, like right. to me, that that's the genius statement right there. If I'm Getsy, I I go to even Flus, I go to polls, and I say, hey, Allen Robinson, I can turn him into Devontae Adams. Granted, you don't have. Aaron Rodgers on the center to, to, to kind of replicate that. But he's Allen Robinson is still good enough where you can throw him the ball, right? Mm-hmm. Throw him the ball to be like, yo, I, I can give him the ball. And I, for me, that's what it is. And I think if you throw an incentive-laden contract to Allen Robinson, right, and really just get that negative taste out of his mouth where you're like, listen, I understand you didn't like what was going on last year, but we're going to get you the ball. And if you get 80 receptions, if you can get eight, 900 yards, we'll incentivize this, this contract to get you where you want to be and if they could do something like that, then I think it's a match made in heaven for sure. Yeah, I, I, w- I would love that because you look at some of the top wide receivers are coming off injuries, you know, Michael Gallup and company. But Allen Robinson still has it in the tank. He's under 30 years old. He, he showed that he can come back from the ACL. And he had, I, think, I believe, it was 1,400 yards with Mitchell Trubisky and that Matt Nagy offense one year. So he still hey, has Corey, a lot left. I- and Corey, his body is fresh. It didn't get used exactly. last year. <laughs> yeah, he was <laughs> resting. A young I- under 30 guy. I told I told Joey this. I said last year Allen Robinson was checked out. That's why he yeah. had that little hamstring injury, and that lasted weeks. And I said yeah. if everything was going well. He was getting the rock. Him and Matt Nagy were on the same page. He would have probably played through that. You know, maybe missed a week or so. But you know, when things aren't going well for your team, and you 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 kind of have a disconnect with the coach, you're less likely to play. And especially he's built up the reputation where he can do that. So hey, Corey, I, Corey, I let me. Corey, let me ask you something real quick because I haven't seen you in a couple weeks. You know, what's your take on just kind of all the stuff that's matriculating out about what Matt Nagy did and did not have relationship-wise with some of these players? You know, you're hearing it from Allen Robinson. You saw the Mitch Trubisky article come out. Anthony Miller, whatever, has said a few things. You know, as a former player in a locker room, you know, what do you take away from that? Is that kind of like par for the course, business as usual? It all kind of goes bad in the end, or you think there's a lot more real to that than, than no, we, we there's, knew about? There's it. a lot of real to that. You, you look at the example. When I played for Lovey Smith, there wasn't anyone that had a bad thing to say about him, right, that, that played for him. Everybody loved him. Grown men were crying in the room when they found out he got fired. Like, literally, that's how much of an impact, and that's how much people respected him. I feel like at first, and, and Gabe, we can attest to this, I feel like everybody bought into Matt Nagy that first season. You know, everybody, you know, was around him you know he really invigorated that locker room and then after that second year when the offense really wasn't going and he wouldn't make changes that's when he kind of lost the locker room a little bit and you kind of saw the shift the defense was still the same when Vic Fangio was there but then the offense wasn't doing the same and then when Fangio left and Chuck Pagano was there the defense really wasn't carrying so I could just see over the years and especially this year guys weren't playing for him the same way they were that first yeah. year so he had lost the locker room at that point. And, and if there's a couple people, you know, whisperings of it, it was true, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, coach that people really love and, and buy into, they're not going to be talking smack about him. And, uh, and let's, yeah. let's be fair, Corey. Lovey had 10 wins when he left. So yeah, so we went 10 and 6. Go, right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> right? So, he, so pe- people were like, damn, this coach is good. Why are you, you know, a black head coach, you know, one of yeah. the few that are out there and you know, had 10 wins. How are we going to get rid of him for, yeah. you know, a guy like Tressman, you know? So I think in that instance, but I think the Matt Nagy thing, the worst part about it is just the 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 fall from his, his I don't want to call it a high horse, but just like he was just doing so well and everybody had such high hopes for him. And then he just couldn't see him duplicate it, right? Like that it you got it's hard to win in the NFL. There's teams that make it look so easy. But when you have a coach that just is being I don't want to say stubborn because I don't know what he did. I don't. I wasn't there. I'm not. No, he was being stubborn. Wait, 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 Gabe. Gabe, real quick, (laughs) if you could name like a one-hit wonder artist or a one-hit album, yeah. I that would this. be like a Matt Nagy. What do you think it would have been? Because this is what I'm yeah. – he feels like he's like the GameCube of play systems. Like we loved it when it all came out, but it never stood the test of time. Or like or, or, or an album that came out. You know what I mean? Like who yeah. would the Matt Nagy be in music? You know what I mean? I'd say like 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 Kobe O'Donis. You know, like <laughs> some, some, Jay Sean. There you go. Jay Sean. <laughs> yeah. he, he, was, yeah. he, was with Lil, he was with Lil Wayne. You know what I mean? Yeah. And everybody thought he was the hot – can I curse on this podcast? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. He, he thought – he, he thought he was the hot shit, right? Like, yeah. Jay Sean, I got the backing of Lil Wayne. You know, I got a hot record. And then it was like, bro, where's your next record at, bro? Like, yeah. you keep coming out with duds. And, and that's that's really what it is. I mean, 
you know, he came out hot and he started feeling himself and he felt like he knew what was best. I, I don't want to say he felt because I already did that because I don't know, but it mm-hmm. seemed like he just, he just got in his own way. I mean, when you can't give up the play, and I don't want to poo poo on Matt Nagy. I don't want to do it. I don't wanna, I'm not going to talk about it. Nope. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not going to do it. You know, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say Millie Vanilli, right? Because because we, we thought, <laughs> no, no, they and, were and successful. Is, yeah, they were successful, right? But everyone thought they were the real ones singing, just like we thought Matt Nagy was the one calling the plays for Kansas City, right? That's when we hilarious. came here, we said, "Oh yeah, we got this great offensive coordinator for Kansas City. Look at him, Patrick Mahomes and company." Now nah, that was Andy Reid's show, just like Millie Vanilli. That was somebody else's song. So that's and what then, that's and- what- and then Nagy, Nagy had his first season. He was like, girl, you know it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and then what happened afterwards? They realized. Yeah, he won awards. Tried. And then they got in the studio the next year, and uh, there, was, there was nothing. <laughs> they hey, turned the mic on, and nothing's going on. <laughs> they were throwing that hair to the side. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, maybe we'll come up with music comps for Eberflus at a different time, but I feel like it's going to be something like James Taylor or something really like. Joe, Corey, I, got, I got one for you. Free agency, right? And another possible reunion. What do you feel about Akeem Hicks coming back, Gabe? Possibly. I, I got to be honest, man. I'm a big Chicago White Sox fan, and I went on many of shows and defended Jose Abreu being on the team because I understood what it was like to have you know, to be a Latin male myself and, you know, to not have your father growing up, like you need those father figures, right? And people of color, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of us don't have our dads, you know? So sometimes you need that person in the locker room that, you know, when you're successful and young and making money in the NFL, like you ain't listening to nobody, right? But if you have an elder statesman that can kind of hold you down, teach you the ropes, not necessarily being an all pro type caliber player, but someone that can at least, that you can trust. And I feel like Akeem Hicks can be that player. He's been around the league. He plays hard when he's healthy. And with a lot of young guys coming into the system and the Bears trying to really recreate who they are on the defensive side of the ball, he can be a mainstay, just like Jose Abreu, someone that can still perform, you know, get you your hits, your home run occasionally, stop the run, you know, uh, attract the double team, you know, but at the same time, still kind of mentor the younger guys that are coming in. And so for me, it's a no-brainer. He yeah. loves Chicago. He wants to be here. So bringing a team, like, I don't know, Corey, you tell me, like, you're yeah. you played on the defensive line. Wouldn't having an older statesman, you know, an elder statesman on your team really be beneficial to the younger guys? Oh, I, I, I think it'd be great. He, he is the heartbeat of that defense. You look from when he's in there and when he's not, the defense really drops off when he's not. Uh, he's still productive. And people say, well, you know, he's been banged up, this, that, and the other but it hasn't been any serious injuries. It's been a groin here. He had his elbow that was kind of a freak deal, but it hasn't been any ACLs, hasn't been any crazy shoulder injuries. So I would love to get him back on a a one-year kind of prove-it deal almost, like maybe maybe a two-year deal with with the first-year front heavy, you know, with the money. So that way, if he's productive like we think he is, then it becomes a a two-year deal. And then if it's not, then after the first year, you have the option – you know, to, to cancel the contract, you know, release him. So, but I would love to have him back. I think, you know, he's one of the underrated D tackles in the game, you know, in my opinion, you know, he's, he's kind of up there with a guy like Cam Hayward for Pittsburgh. He's that engine that runs that defense. That's why TJ Watt is so productive. And I feel like that's why a guy like Khalil Mack and Robert Quinn can really benefit off a guy like Akeem Hicks. We've got a couple more topics here with Gabe Ramirez here from Bears Unleashed, B96, uh, Bears Analyst, Fox 32, all the good stuff. Uh, let's just do qu- some broad NFL just real quick. If it's cool, I'm going to go one at a time with each of you. We're just going to name a team. We're going to do a quick little lightning round, and then we're going to kind of maybe open it up a little bit. So I want to ask you guys where you guys think these quarterbacks are going to be playing next Ooh. season. Ooh. And I just this is going to be a quick lightning round flash reaction, and then we're going to pick apart a couple of them. Uh, let's start first with Russell Wilson. Gabe, go first. Where do you think he'll, Russell Wilson will be next year? The Washington Commanders. Woohoo, Corey. Yeah, I, I think the same. I think it's a good fit for him. Uh, I, I think he'll be there. Interesting. Carson Wentz. Uh, ooh, my uh, backup for the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> nice, Corey. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I think he's going to be a back. I don't know where, but I think he's going to be a backup somewhere. Looking to compete with, with a starter. I think they're going to bring him in somewhere in a situation. I don't know which team yet, but I guess we will see. Mitchell Trubisky. I think he stays with the Bills. I think they bring him. Uh, I don't know if anybody's going to offer him. Like I know people are saying he could be a starter, 
but I don't feel like people are going to offer him enough money. Maybe he'll go to the Giants, follow his offensive coordinator, uh, Dabble. Yep, Dable. Over, yeah. Dable. Yeah, Dable. I think, I, think, I think he might follow him, maybe be a backup over there to Daniel Jones, put some pressure on him. That, that's what, what, what I've heard, though, is, is Dable, you know, when he got the Giants job, supposedly he really loved Trubisky from Buffalo, loved what he did there. Obviously, they had Josh Allen, so he's not playing over Josh Allen. But they think he can compete against Daniel Jones and possibly win that job. Because I know Giants fans, I'm, I'm from Rutherford, uh, all, all my Giants buddies, Daniel Jones, Daniel Dimes. No, he's, he's Daniel Pennies. So they're done with yeah. him. So, and Dable saw something in, in Mitchell Trubisky. So it'd be great to see if Mitchell Trubisky could start for the Giants, perform well, and then everyone really knows that it was Matt Nagy and it wasn't Trubisky. I'd love that. And then Trubisky Final. whiskey, right? That you coined back in the day. You said that's your whiskey whiskey. And you can't oh, get that in stores. All right. I have supped I have supped upon that uh many a time. <laughs> <laughs> that Maserati Mitch, uh that Maserati Mitch blend. Never went down that smooth as I thought it would. Uh, final one, um, uh, Gabe, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers, where, where, where is he playing next year? Uh, I, I really wish he would play somewhere other than Green Bay, but, but I think that Green Bay understands what they have in Aaron Rodgers, and not only are they going to get the quarterback coach that he loves, but they'll do anything to keep him there. So I think he's going to remain in Green Bay. Corey? I, I, think, I think the same. I mean, they're going to give him whatever he wants. Devontae Adams, they're going to give him that tandem. It is one of the best in the league. Uh, so they're, they're both not going anywhere. Yeah. Why would you go to the AFC if you're Aaron Rodgers at this point, other than obviously comfort and money and all that good stuff? If you look at the quarterbacks now and you think Pittsburgh maybe makes a move at a quarterback. But Joey, uh, if you think, Joey, if you think he's, if he thinks he's good, like, okay, I'm saying, I'm saying the Packers, but if I'm Aaron Rodgers, I'm, I'm like, I don't care what conference I go to. I don't care who, I don't care who I play against. I'm, I'm like, give me some receivers, give me some defense. You know, he only yeah. got Devontae Adams. He has a mediocre defense. He went to the Broncos, right, with the receiving core that they have, with the running backs that they have, with the defense that they have. I don't think he fears, you know, Patrick Mahomes and and and, and those guys. And, and, and I just I just don't. If I'm Aaron yeah. Rodgers, he's so yeah. cocky. You don't care. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm with you, man. I, I think it's more of, like, convenience, right, where, like, you can't knock LeBron for staying in the East for so many years, but the East was pretty right. easy, right? So you do have to kind of – I think he's just kind of weighing that. And saying to himself, you know, if I can't get to like San Francisco or something, yeah, I mean, I, I'd right. love, for, dude, I, I, we, we would all drive him out there, like all of us personally, <laughs> we personally, go, go, go. we'd all That's take him out. Fact, we'd fact, listen fact. to all of his stuff for like <laughs> mi- thousands of miles, drop him off, and just like hey, bro, turn it to eleven. Have a good one. You're good, bro. You're good. I can't hear you. We're driving away. What? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Leave at the gas station. Uh, final one, real quick, before we get you out of here, guys. You guys are co-hosts, and we do something on this program on Believe in Bears called Corey Stories. So I'm wondering if you guys want to maybe trade a Gabe story, a Corey story about your guys, your time working together, a brew and view story, something that has to do with uh, all of your guys' great work over at Fox 32. Uh, whoever wants to go first, lay it on me, but I, I just want to hear a little story time real quick. I'm going to steal Corey's because I know he's going to mention this. Uh, oh! Corey, Corey, you got to think of something else. One time, you know, I'm from Chicago, Humboldt Park, Puerto Rico, born and raised, and I tell Corey he wants to hang out with me. I say, Corey, man, we're going to this, we're gonna go to this club, but it's a little hood, bro. I was like, just so you know, it's, it's hood. And he's like, yeah, I ain't worried about it. Da, da, da. So we get to the we get to the bottle section. They take care of us. They give us a couple bottles. And right next to us, like 30 game makers just just, just it up. <laughs> everything. Face up, stats. Everything. And I'm like, look, bro, I told you, I'm, I'm real as they come. Like, you gonna hang out with me. We're gonna, we gonna do it. So, but he held his own. Everybody yeah. showed a mad respect. There was no drama. Yeah. We didn't get in. And I'm pretty sure that I didn't get into a fight that day because I had court next to me. The real security guy. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, man, you, 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 took, you took my story. Um, I knew I, I was. Say, I, I probably say the other one that was funny was this year it happened. Uh, actually, actually, when your wife, your wife's family uh, came out to to the uh, brewing view we did, and that dude that was shirtless ran up behind him. Oh bro, he had me God. so. I was like, I was like, uh, the, uh, with the game, game took games like, and it, it, he just, he just kept going. I was kept like, going. I was shook. Oh, it's shit, we got bro. in trouble. We got in trouble because obviously it's the pandemic. So they're trying to keep people within a safe distance. This guy comes right behind us with his shirt off, right next to Corey and I. We think nothing of it. We think it's fun. All of a sudden, the producers and everything are like, we cannot have any more audience members behind these two guys. It looks terrible on TV during the pandemic. So we kind of got in trouble. But yeah, I was, like this I was gonna TV. say, 
I was gonna say like the dude had a mask on but no shirt on. No, you know what I mean? No, like, no, that's, like, no mask, no he was playing volleyball and ran over when he saw when he saw it was rolling. Oh, yeah. he had me caught off so bad. I'm like, what is this dude about to do? I'm like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> had me off balance. Yeah, yeah. I, I gotta do a special mention. I gotta do a special mention on a story. We're at another brewing view, and this girl, this girl couldn't have been, but like. She had to be 21 because she was serving alcohol. So maybe just fresh out of 21. She walks up to Corey Wooten and she goes, Corey Wooten, for <laughs> this little girl. She goes, you got Snapchat? <laughs> I, I said, no, nah, I don't have Snapchat. <laughs> she said, no. She's, she's, that was the funniest thing ever. I said, did this girl just boldly ask for a former NFL player Snapchat of Broomview? This girl is hilarious. Hey, kudos to her, though. We always hey, she have shot that a kind shot, of right? Shot Worst part is that's not going to get any easier, too, as we all get older. There's just going to be like some new app, and like they're just going to come up to you. And just gonna be like, like, hey, hey, it's, it's 35 three bucks over the, the Bears in the second quarter. <laughs> uh, we're having a great time. <laughs> uh, great stuff, you guys. Uh, Gabe Ramirez, man, thank you so much for joining Believe in Bears. Um, before you get out of here, man, toss our audience out your socials and stuff so people can follow your great work. You're constantly putting out content, man. Uh, you got a fan of myself. I'm so happy that I got a chance to meet you. Uh, you got a beautiful Likewise. family, man. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. I appreciate it. First and foremost, I would just say, hey, man, gentlemen, get me on more often. I yes. think, Joey, you're doing fantastic yeah. work. You know, I love Corey, but, Joey, you do, you do a great job with this podcast, man. So anytime you guys want me on, and I know most people say that and they're just full of shit. But I'm serious. Get me on this motherfucker. No, he's serious. He's Please. Yes. Um, more, 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 man. But but if you do want to follow me, just put in Gabe Ramirez. IG is where I put the most content out. I'm trying to build my TikTok up. So if you got any young hey. people listening, holler at me on TikTok. So you can find me Chicago underscore Gabe. Corey will tell you there's nobody that's more Chicago than I am. And that's why the name nah. fits. Mr. Chicago. The king of Chicago. Gabe Ramirez. The freaking Puerto Rican. Let's go. No, no, no. Not that, though. Not that. Though. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, man, today's episode of Believe in Bears. Thank you so much for all of our great sponsors and for checking us out on YouTube here today. Our main presenter is BetOnline.ag, 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. When you use promo code Believe, B-L-E-A-V, uh, great pod. Great to see you guys. Great laughs. Corey, man, take us home on another pod, man. Good to see you. Man, it was always great to catch up with my guy Gabe. We got to get him on the show more. Uh, we're going to bring you more content with free agency coming up. Uh, we'll have some more Corey stories. Hopefully we can get Gabe on in the future. Uh, another great pod, Joey, and uh, love doing this, man. Yeah, dude. Thank you so much for checking out this one. Uh, we'll be back hopefully very soon. Be well, be safe. Please be good to each other. And remember, even in the off season, you got to bear down. Bear down, baby. Oh,